maintaining your foundation, again, is maintaining your routine. It's not a ritual. It's a routine. And so many times people have compromised their routine or become lazy and complacent because they've considered it a ritual. But just like every day you get up and you have a routine, you know, to get ready for work and get certain things ready, you get to get ready for warfare. You got to get ready to step into the spirit. And that's why we invite the Holy Spirit. As soon as your, your eyes open, you should always invite the Holy Spirit. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Quicken me and revive me. Help me pray. Amen. Ask for guidance from the throne. See, when you don't start off in a humble way and ask for direction from the throne room and help from the throne, then you're doing it in your own strength. And you may not realize that even though you're doing it, but you're doing it in your own strength. And the Word tells us to acknowledge the Lord in all of our ways. The Word says that we should be strong in the power of Christ, not ourself. We should come to the end of ourselves. Every time we try to do it, and we try to do it in our own strength, we blow it. Amen? We make mistakes. We do all kinds of goofy things. In this, there's an, uh, an area where we take these, the routine that God has given us, and we maintain and establish the foundation. That should be carried everywhere we go. So the things that we've learned on in maintaining Wherever we go, we should set up what we call landmarks. Everyone say a landmark. These are protective landmarks. If you've not learned, you won't set these up everywhere you go. The Bible tells us to bind the strong man. That's the powers of darkness wherever you go, that you may enter and plunder the goods of the evil one. But wherever you go, there should be landmarks set up. A landmark, uh, let me explain this. Before construction, there's a survey that goes on, and they set up landmarks. When they set up the landmarks, this is what is established. So these are protective landmarks in the spirit. We call them boundaries also, protective boundaries. But you can't have a boundary until you set the landmarks up. So as you begin to learn the things about the spirit, and you begin to learn the things about the demonic and all the influences and their strategies and all kinds of things to that degree, you'll begin to set up landmarks everywhere you go because they're protective for you. In other words, you are setting up a limitation of something that you will not go beyond. Associations with people, the way you eat, the way you think. Does everybody understand that? Everything will have a landmark set up. And if you don't set those, see, God begins to train us to set, he sets the landmarks for us in the beginning. Then he expects us to learn to set, where to set the landmarks after. Now, sometimes those landmarks will expand or come smaller or whatever. And those things, again, without landmarks, there's no boundaries. But you go to Acts 17, 22. Those who are led by the Spirit are sons and daughters of God. The Spirit always is setting up landmarks for us. When you step beyond the boundaries of, or the protective landmarks, the spirit will not go with you. Does everybody understand that? He will wait till you come back. He doesn't go beyond what he, in other words, he can't interrupt himself. Then Paul stood in the midst. Is everybody with me? of the Areopagus, and said, Men of the Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very religious. Now, we know the word religion means bondage, so we're not religious. I mean, I'm really religious. Oh, you're really religious? No, I'm not. I'm free. Religion means bondage. You are free. For as I was passing through the, and considering the objects of your worship, I even found an altar in this inscription to the unknown God. 
Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing him, I will proclaim to you. God who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. Nor is he worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. And he has made from one blood, everyone say one blood, every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth, and has determined their pre-appointed times and their what? Boundaries of their dwelling. So can you have a boundary without a landmark? No. So that they should seek the Lord and in hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. There, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, something shaped by art of man's devising. Truly, these times of ignorance God has overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to what? Repent and turn from those ways. Because he has appointed on a, a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. These are protective landmarks that have boundaries. Again, God is training us up to set these landmarks so we can have boundaries. These are protection. Does everybody understand that? Because in this, it's our responsibility to make what is unseen to become seen. Amen? Now, you're not going to see everything. But if you set landmarks up wherever you go, you are walking in a protective boundary. In other words, you may be going into a whole new different place. Especially when you start a job. Think about when you start something new, you go into a place. And, 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 you, and you kind of like, you protect yourself. You're searching things through. And, and as you begin to hang there longer and longer and longer, you'll be able to set landmarks and protect, protective landmarks with boundaries, and you'll begin to see who you can associate with and who you can't. You'll begin to see who's the liar and who tells the truth? And you don't have to say a word. You'll see who's an addict and who's free. You'll know in the spirit. of. You'll know these things. Because the anointing tells you all these things. Amen? Let's go to Psalm 91. Quoting scriptures and being over the boundaries will do you no good. The only thing you can do is repent. <laughs> Does everybody get it? That's the only thing that's going to allow us back into the boundaries and the protective boundaries. So many people are out of position trying to quote scriptures and get something done, and it ain't happening. In Psalm 91 and verse 9. Is everybody there? It, it says, Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the Most High, your what? Is that a boundary? Is that, is that made by landmarks? It's a location. It's a place of landmarks that have been established. These are things that you and I must <laughs> make. Even the Most High, your dwelling place. It's a place of dwelling. It's a landmark established with boundaries. It says here something. Now, here it is. If you truly are setting landmarks and boundaries, it says, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. 
In their hands they will bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. You shall trample underfoot. This is what he said. It's the landmarks of protection. Because he has set his love upon the Lord, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he knows my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. Now is it because he's out of the boundaries of the land, uh, landmarks of protection or in them? He's in them. Does everybody understand? This person's in them. And the Lord says, this is what I'm going to do if you're in the boundaries. If you have set landmarks. I will be with you in trouble. I will deliver you and honor you. With long life, I'll satisfy you and show you my salvation. That's his promise of those who set protective landmarks and establish boundaries. So we have to do our own. The word says without revelation, we, the restraints of the flesh are not maintained. That's why it's important that we seek and get revelation from God. Now, you must set your lamp. Now, the Holy Spirit sets landmarks for us in our way of attitude. In our words. In our thoughts. He's saying don't go beyond these. That's why the word talks about renewing your thought, renewing your mind. The mind is your location of all memory. Amen? In the interaction of thoughts. That's what the mind is. So he's saying, listen, renew your mind daily. Why? So that you can maintain a set landmark or boundaries so you don't say what you shouldn't say, so you don't agree with what you think or what comes in. So that you don't walk in blindness so you're able to see. You know, in it, there should be limitations of what we do, but unlimitations in the spirit. In other words, things that we eat. Amen. I always tell people if you eat enough Twinkies, you turn into a Twinkie. Amen. Things that you desire, there should be landmarks of those things. Did you ever overeat and feel too full? Don't raise your hands, because if you didn't, you'd lie. Amen? It's an uncomfortable feeling. You know what happened? We went beyond the boundary. We went beyond the landmark. We didn't set either that or we didn't set a landmark. Okay, I'm done. Hello? I mean, it's uncomfortable. And then something else comes out, and you wanted to taste it, but you knew if you taste it, you'd blow up. John 15, verse 5. I am the vine, and you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my what? Disciples. So without landmarks, you can't be a disciple. Amen. Abide is an area of boundaries. They're made by protective landmarks. So that we can be trained and we can learn to set up our own landmarks. You know, the Bible tells us that as children of God and servants of the Lord, that we should know how to maintain these vessels and know how to please God in everything we do. But if there's not a mindset for that, 
a mindset, let me tell you, a mindset, if your mind is not set on things above, it says set your things on the things above, set your thoughts on the things above, those are landmarks. Things are being set so that you don't go beyond what God is asking you to do. Did you ever go out and you were doing something and you said, you know what, I should quit, uh, you know, digging or whatever it was if I, you know, and you go, ah, a few more, few more shovels, a few more, and all of a sudden, oh, I hurt my back. Well, you just went beyond your landmark. Amen? Or you didn't set a landmark. Same thing with associations with people. There was a time when, you know, it's just like, okay, I'm done. Bye. <laughs> and, and so many people are so concerned about what people think of them. I mean, everybody wants somebody to think about them as good. Amen. But sometimes if we go beyond the time of stay, we fall into the traps of the enemy. And say something stupid or whatever it is or agree with something we shouldn't. Because we are there longer than we should be when there's been a land, uh, mark and the spirit is saying, look it, it's time to go. Or it's time to shut up. <laughs> or he's preparing you so you don't react, you respond. Those are landmarks that have to be set. We need to abide in the Lord. Amen. Psalm 1. In verse 1. Let's speak it. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Hello. In other words, he doesn't go to the phone. He goes to the throne. Amen. He gets counsel. So cursed is the man who walks in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor stands in the path of the sinners. Nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Now are these landmarkers that God is saying, look at, I'm telling you, abide by these landmarkers and you'll be protected. Amen. But his delight is in the law or the truth of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither. And whatever he does shall what? Prosper. Everybody wants to prosper, but you're not going to prosper if you don't have landmarks set and protective boundaries. The ungodly are not so. No, they're not. They're not. They do whatever. But like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the reward of the judgment of God. Doesn't mean the judgments of God. It's the reward of God. Nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous and the way of the ungodly will what? Perish. So it's rebellion ungodly. Yes. And why are people rebellious? They are rebellious to landmarks. Hallelujah. Psalm 15. Every time you said, man, you know, I just knew I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have bought that. I knew I shouldn't have agreed with that. It's because you went over the marker. Amen. You, you said you knew, but then there was a marker set, and you jumped right over it. Amen. We've all made that mistake. And then there's times when you said, man, I'm glad I didn't do that. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't jump over that landmark or run over it. Psalm 15, uh, Psalm 15 verse 1. Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Now, the tabernacle is an essential place. We live in the tabernacle. There's the outer court, the holy place, and most holy place. You're either living in the, the tabernacle that has its own landmarks and boundaries or you're out in the outer court in the, or outer darkness. Amen. Who may abide in your tabernacle? Who may dwell in your holy hill? Are you ready? 
Here's a guideline. He who walks what? Uprightly. Who works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. Who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor. Nor does he take up reports against his friend. And whose eyes a vile person is despised. But he honors those who fear the Lord. Reverence, honor, and respect him. He swears to his own hurt and does not change. Why? Listen, you're not going to, in other words, he's not changing no matter what circumstances come around. No matter what trials, tribulations, no matter what's happening in their life, they don't change because they've set landmarks, protective landmarks with protective boundaries. They stay in them. See, but the enemy likes to entice people to come out of them. Verse 5, he who does not put out his money at usury. Just think how much the enemy steals from us when B.C. before Christ and all the drugs, alcohol, and all the other things we did and whatever. And Hallelujah. Nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved out of position. Does everybody get it? These are guidelines to protective landmarks. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Do not be what? Deceived. Deceived. There's a lot of good people out there, but they're deceived. And they think that their goodness is going to be right with God or their works instead of knowing who he is. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever man sows that he will also what? Reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not what? Lose heart. So many times people will step out of the boundaries of the landmarks of protection. That's called sowing in the flesh. That's called reacting, not responding. When you are in the boundaries, you will always respond. You have dominion over yourself. You have dominion over your feelings. You have dominion over your thoughts. You have dominion over your desires. You have dominion over the voices. If you're in the boundaries. Set landmarks. Amen? So you've got to set landmarks also to whatever voice you're going to hear. John 14, verse 6. It says, Jesus said to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Again, this is the tabernacle. Because Jesus is the tabernacle. Amen? No one comes to the Father except for through me. If you had known me, you would know the Father, my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. And Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. Well, Philip didn't have any landmarks. Set. Jesus was with them the whole time. He said, well, just show. he didn't get it. And Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? Oh, man, is that a landmark. Abide. The words that I speak to you, I do not speak in my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the work. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also in greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that my Father may be glorified in the Son. 1 John chapter 2. You know, there's the old saying of 
people, places, and things. And that's a true saying. Avoid people, places, and things. In other words, when you set landmarks, protective landmarks, and they have protective boundaries, you will no longer associate with certain people, places, or things that you used to. But the enemy will try and bring them up. They'll try and draw you back. First John chapter 2. You know, when, when you're an addict, you try to say, you try to create a landmark and say no, but you just can't. You want to change, but you can't because those are demons. You want to do the right thing, but you can't because you're loaded with demons. I don't feel them. Look at the fruit. If you don't have control, someone else does. Amen? These are demons, demonic spirits. Well, I'm a Christian. I can't have demons. Well, you're deceived. And you got a big demon because <laughs> he's deceiving you. Hallelujah. The powers of darkness want to set uh, bondages of limitation so you can't proceed in serving the Lord or being free. They love people to go from freedom to demon management. And many people have. Many people got freed and then they went back and they fell into demon management instead of freedom. Why? Because they did not maintain a landmark or, or boundaries. See, even after you get freed up, listen, I had a visitation from the Lord and all kinds of wonderful things happened. But God still set boundaries to me, still made me make landmarks to protect me. Because nobody's, no one, no one except for Jesus is constantly free unless you cooperate and maintain that freedom. The enemy will come to steal, kill, and destroy. So many people are going, oh, man, you know, I've been doing this, this, and that. I'm, I'm, I've tried everything. And then they come to Jesus. They don't even give Jesus an opportunity to work. So how has it been working for you before Jesus? Well, I've accepted the Lord. I'm a believer. No, wait a minute. There's a difference between believer, one who follows and one who doesn't. Don't tell me you're a believer if you're not a follower. If you're not setting landmarks of protection, you're not a believer. The only thing you're following is the dictate of your own emotional heart. Amen? 1 John chapter 2, and verse 15. What does it say? Do not what? Love the world or the things in the world. Is that a boundary? <laughs> yeah. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And who's the ruler of the earth? Satan. And the world is perishing away, passing away, and, it's, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. He who does the will of God abides forever. So he who does not do the will of God cannot abide forever. That means there's no landmarks of protection and no boundaries. And the enemy uses that individual's prey, food. And how does the enemy get fed? By emotions from an individual. Little children, this is the last hour, and you have heard the Antichrist is coming. Even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us, for if they had been with us, they would have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. Oh. Again, keeping ourselves from worldliness is essential. Let's go to um, Colossians chapter 2. When they finally put uh, on the cigarette packs, warning. <laughs> you know, they put them on too late, but warning. But, you know, they still sold them. Amen? Because they were making money. They didn't care where the... Okay, we're going to give you a choice to kill yourself or not. 
Here's a warning, but you can have a free will to do this. Everybody has a free will. God doesn't interfere with our will. Amen. He'd like us to will what he wills. And as we begin to surrender our life more and more and more and exchange our old life for the new life, we begin to set these landmarks so that we do not fall as prey to the enemy. We are protected. But the enemy likes to compromise, get us to compromise. And Colossians 2 and verse 4. Now this I say, lest anyone should deceive you with per persuasive words. For though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see you in good order. So everyone say good order. Look it. It's called divine order. If you're living a life of divine order, you are living a life of setting landmarks that are protective and boundaries. That's called divine order. You make sure that whatever is going on is divine order. That's a part of your routine, amen? And now look at this. For though I am absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in the spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. That's if you have predestined landmarks that are protective and boundaries, and you're keeping them. We're to be steadfast in making these marks. Amen? So what? We're protected. Steadfastness in these. Listen, you know an individual that's up and down, unstable, wishy-washy, no discipline, Amen? No discipline. Do what I feel. That's Satan's doctrine. No landmarks. No protective boundaries. Only when they get in trouble. Only when they blow it big time. Only when there's a dramatic something happens in their life. Oh, Lord, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Today. Tomorrow's another thing. Depends how I feel. <laughs> Galatians chapter 2, verse 4. And this occurred because the false what? Brethren secretly brought in who came in by what? Stealth to spy out our freedom, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into what? Bondage. To whom we did not yield submission even for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. For from those who seem to be something, whatever they were, it makes no difference to me. God shows personal favoritism to no man. For those who seemed to be something added nothing to me. But on the contrary, when they saw that the gospel for the uncircumcised had been committed to me as the gospel for the circumcised was to Peter, for he who worked effectively in Peter for the apostleship to the circumcised also worked effectively in me toward the Gentiles. And when James, Cephas, and, and John, who seemed to be pillars, <laughs> perceived the grace that had been given to me, they gave me and Bar uh, Barnabas the right hand of the fellowship that we should go to the Gentiles and they should be circumcised. 
Now this circumcision is of the heart. Amen. It's of the what? Heart. 2 Corinthians 13, verse 4. Now, the word circumcised and uncircumcised means those who are maintain a covenant with God and those who do not. It says, for though Jesus was crucified in weakness, yet he lives by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Now, let me share with you, when you begin to set these landmarks, you'll know whether you're walking in faith or not. Test yourselves. Do you not know that yourselves, that Jesus Christ is, is in you, unless indeed you are disqualified? Will you be disqualified if you continue to live over the landmarks? Yes. But I trust that you will know that we are not disqualified. Now I pray to God that you do no evil, not that we should appear approved, but that you should do what is honorable, though we may be, be seem disqualified. For we can do nothing against the truth but for the truth. For we are glad when we are weak and you are strong. And this also we pray that you may be made complete. Matthew 25, verse 1. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now when you are Washed by the blood, you become a virgin. And the bridegroom is Christ. Verse 2. Now, five of them were wise and five stupid or foolish. And those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. In other words, they didn't come and worship. You get oil by what? Worship. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps because they worshiped they maintained a life of worship but while the bridegroom was delayed they all slumbered and slept and at midnight a cry was heard behold the bridegroom is coming go out to meet him then all the virgins of rose trimmed their lamps and the foolish said to the wise give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out but the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you. But you go, rather, to those who sell and buy for yourself. In other words, you can't give your oil to nobody else. You purchase your oil through worship. And while they went to go buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. So they had set protective landmarks and boundaries. They maintained a life of worship. Amen? That's why the Bible says, Forsake not to assemble. They maintained a life of worship. And in that worship, they maintained the oil. They're lit, they're, they were constantly, they were not lukewarm. They were not cold. They were hot. See, when you maintain that presence of God, you become Christ-like. Jesus knows you. In fact, the Bible says that the Father searches for those who will worship him in truth and spirit. Amen? 1 Corinthians 14. No change comes without an exchange. Amen. So as you're worshiping, you're exchanging old for new. 1 Corinthians 14, 39. Therefore, brethren, desire earnestly to prophesy. Do not forbid to speak with tongues. 
Let all things be done what? Decently and what? In order. In what? Order. So our, we should be living a life of divine order. And that cannot be established without setting protective landmarks that protect set boundaries. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh or in the natural, we do not war according to the flesh or the physical. For the weapons of our warfare are not physical or carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. What's a stronghold? A memory lie. See, if you're pulling down these memory lies, then you're setting up landmarks. And you're getting rid of them every time they try and come in. Casting down arguments in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And being ready to punish all disobedient when your obedience is fulfilled. What is your obedience? Setting landmarks. Amen? Protective landmarks. In other words, you should be able to discern what's coming in. And a Disagreeing with needs to be and get tossed out of things. You know, sometimes when a, a thought comes in, it actually exposes some of the strongholds that you have. Because that thought will all of a sudden cr activate some, a couple other things. Now you're able to see it. Now you're able to remove all of them. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? You go, man, I didn't realize that, 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 that. You can all get out of here. Hallelujah. So it's our responsibility to cast down these thoughts and imaginations or remove them from us. Because behind them are spirits just trying to re-enter. They're always knocking on your door. Don't say who's there. <laughs> you need to say who told me that. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I'm going to close at 1 Peter chapter 5. There's a very important landmark. It's called pride or humbleness, humility. And when you step over that thing in pride, every demon from hell wants you. It's the me, myself, and I syndrome. Pride, P-R-I-D-E, -E, personal reverence, personal reverence into a deadly end. Verse 5, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Likewise, you younger people, or immature, submit yourselves to the elders, more mature. Yes, and all of you be submissive or respectful. Respectful. How you treat someone, believe me, you won't get away with it. Be respectful to one another and be clothed with what? Humility, humbleness. If you're pride and think you know it all, you're going to be a moron. God resists the proud. That's why some people never advance. But he gives grace, he gives his plan to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Casting your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be what? What's that mean? Alert. Be alert. Be vigilant. Be consistent. Maintain your routine. Because the adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour or deceive and dismantle your landmarks. Resist him steadfast in the what? In the faith. Knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have been tested, suffered a while, that you would be perfected, established, strengthened, and settled. And to him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen.
If God be with us, who can be against us? Remember, this is a military operation, not some wimpy thing. Amen? We are in a military operation sent by God. Jesus is the commander-in-chief of the military. Holy Ghost Boot Camp Officers Training School never stops. We never stop being trained. We're always learning something because the enemy's always coming up with another strategy and God wants to keep us ahead all the time. So don't forget to set landmarks for yourself wherever you go. Listen to the Spirit. He will guide you and set these landmarks. He will prepare you. He'll tell you, you know what? Get ready because this, this isn't right. This isn't right. That's right. What's, he's going to let you know. But if you don't listen, if you're not hearing, you're too prideful. I got it. I'm all right. Yeah. You'll eat dust. Hello? Eat dirt all over again. Praise God. Is everybody cool? Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your strategies, and we thank you. Now, Holy Spirit, we ask in the name of Jesus that you'll restore us and give us the wisdom and discernment needed so that we can set these land, protective landmarks up with boundaries of protection by your spirit, not by our own devising, but by your spirit. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.